Hi guys, welcome to Next Step with Cherry. Today I'm so excited because we are going to be going to a country that is my dream country. Actually, it's my dream country. It's a very beautiful country that I know that it might also be your dream country. One thing I've been thinking about this week is that, I mean, this is the time for you to actually learn how to apply to these scholarships because you see that things are changing, policies are changing, everything is becoming tighter. Now is not the time for you to wait for someone to tell you this is what you have to do, this is how you have to do it, but for you to reset I mean, there are like millions of videos on this YouTube that is going to give you guidelines and like insights on what to do, how to go about it, how to write anything you don't understand. Just go on YouTube, type it, and you will see someone that have made video about that because exchange rate is actually increasing. And now like everything is just changing. So this particular scholarship, actually last year, I talked about it as well. And uh, if I can recall, two people got it from our channel and one lady from Nigeria and one guy from Ghana. So they got the scholarship. That is the ones that, that sent me back like testimony. I don't know about others, but at least the two of them, they got the scholarship and they are currently in New Zealand. So at least New Zealand immigration is currently stable, like it's stable and uh, they are welcoming international students. But for you to go there self-funded is quite expensive as except like you are going for PhD, but for BSc and master's it's very, very expensive. So this government scholarship, New Zealand government scholarship one thing I like about it is because it covers everything it covers every single thing that you can think about like and you can also move with your family uh, it's like to the extent that if you want to buy a book you don't have money it's called it gives you extra money for those kind of resources that you don't have apart from giving you even stipend so you see that it covers a lot of things so that also means that it's a very uh, I would not say it's a very competitive scholarship because the people that got it did not have first class. One thing that I learned last year was that during the application, it had so many essays that you need to write. And that is why I'm saying that you need to start now to be understanding how these things work because it's going to help you whenever you want to apply to any scholarship. In my previous video on the video description, I actually posted a link that contains like database of CVs and SOP, statement of purposes, motivation letter, even even, even samples of recommendation letters from people that have won several scholarships. So make use of that database, read the SOP, the statement of purpose, the motivation letter there, check their own uh, recommendation letter or reference letter sample so that you will know how you can write yours. Prepare all these documents because during the evaluation of this scholarship, they are not actually looking at your grade. They are looking at what you, like the answers you gave them, how you are going to help your community, how you are going to help your country, how you are going to communicate, how you are going to contribute to your country, giving back to your country, your volunteerism and things like that. So please download all this and read it all over again. During that application, because because application is going to start 1st of February. But the reason why I'm making the video now is that you need to check your eligibility and get a link, uh, a number. So that number, you have to use it to log in, to register during your application. So that is why I'm making this video now so that you can go ahead and check your eligibility. So a lot of countries in Africa are actually eligible and also in Asia, Middle East as well, are actually eligible for this scholarship and we're going to see them. Please try to uh, check your eligibility, read everything one by one. Now is not the time to just scan things and and just put in a random application no if you give it like i usually say if you give it 150 percent you will get a 150 percent result if you give it 20 percent you get 20 percent results so you have to take your time and go through each of them one by one i'm going to give you like a round uh, view of how you can apply things that are needed things that you have to put in mind what you need to read like what you need to read especially the selection criteria so you know how to package your yourself package your SOP in the line of what they want and who they are looking for so guys without wasting time please remember to like click like click like subscribe to my channel and also please share 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 this video massively to your friends and uh, let's go to my laptop as I will show you step by step how you can apply and other things about this scholarship hi guys so this is the scholarship the scholarship for international tertiary students and this scholarship it depends on your country so they have different eligibility 
safety criteria and you must you must you must take your time to read through everything and then print, uh, write down things tips and like they broke everything down and we are going to see that but it will be a little bit fast so you will see how you can apply for this scholarship they give you number one you read it through number two you read it through number three to number eight so if we go down we will see also other things number eight get ready to start your scholarship so let's take it one after the other the first one is who is eligible the countries that are eligible for this scholarship so all you need to go is all you need to do is to come here and then you can be able to scroll and find the continent uh, which you are in and then you can op open it and search at least i can see ghana i can see nigeria i can see uh senegal uganda zambia kenya i can see them as well and then if you are from asian country you can also check this asian and see the countries that are eligible to apply for this scholarship so once you have determined that you are eligible to apply now now we go to step two so what is this step two so the step two is let's open that so we can see that so this step two is for you to fill uh, eligibility questionnaire so this questionnaire is already open now because they said it's currently closed and will open in january so january is here already right so because you need to get an online uh, number which you use during your application and application is going to start by february 1st I think February 1st and here you can read through the eligibility requirement the age requirement they mentioned actually that there is no upper age limit even though they would uh, because the minimum age requirements in, uh, in New Zealand even for work is between 40 years below so 39 years is okay but it's you have to be 18 years above so if you are if you are able to prove to them if you are 40 45 and you're able to prove to them that you are the ideal candidate even without the, uh, even uh, though that you are above the age then you are also under consideration you will also be in the under consideration and they will also need a work experience so the work experience might be voluntary unpaid paid work experience but the tip here is that it has to match like it has to link it has to link with what you want to go and study it has to link with the research topic of your country what do i mean so we are going to see that we are going to see what i mean by the research con uh, uh, theme of your country so please read through everything i'm just going to show you real fast and then scholars must contribute to their country's development they are emphasizing on it they're emphasizing on contribution they're emphasizing on different things they're emphasizing on uh um, uh, academic and english requirements for scholars i mean this is more of you that your degree matches what you want to apply they are not really emphasizing on the academic merit but they're emphasizing more of how does your degree like uh, the degree that you have match with the course you want to study or how does your work experience matches with the work uh, the, the course you want to study and how can you contribute to your country's development because they want to fund people that can contribute to their country's development so now is the time you need to start preparing your essays like you need to read through every section and you need to start preparing your essay so guys take your time to go through all these things so that you'll be taking out the tips and the uh, like how many things that you need in which country you hold citizenship this is what you'll see in the questionnaire how long you've been living in this country how much work experience you have at least one year upward whether you will provide scholarship to your country so you have to click here you have to click this online eligibility test and take the test so once you've taken the test and they say that you're eligible then they will give you a code which you will use during your application so you have to do this eligibility test so let's go to the next one so for the next one it says sub, uh, study subject so for study subject each country have like the study area it needs to be under but this should not stop you from applying what do i mean i mean like all of the courses i know it must fall on that one so let's open the africa study area so for the africa these are the recommended subjects not the course not the program but your course should fall under any of these so it is now left for you to find a way to connect your course to the course you want to choose so for example you did uh 
uh, agriculture or uh, maybe you did let's say what are we going to use as an example you did uh, civil engineering or something like that there is no engineering course here but all these things have like civil engineering have like researches that can align with renewable energy that can even align with uh environmental stuff environmental management environmental natural resources because rural development it can align so it's not that the the course you want to apply is this but no it's more like your research area or your work experience aligns with any of this theme then you just need to find a way to align your degree your work experience the future course like the course you would want to apply and how it aligns to this theme to any of this team you can start by explaining the team you want to choose and then you can give them the details of how everything aligns to this team and what you are going to benefit like what you are, what you are hoping to get from this to be able to solve this particular problem that goes back to this thing. Let me explain again. For example, let's say good governance or uh, governance. Then you studied political science. Yes, political science can apply, even though they did not write political science here because there are different areas in political science, good governance, peace and conflict, public policy. It is not left for you to find that area that's now aligns, the, the one that you want to focus. Tell them the problem statement your country is it corruption is it uh, uh irresponsible leaders or something like that how are you going to tackle it and how does the team align so this course that you are going to apply you want to apply for master's program in political science what are you hoping to get from this course uh, things like that so it needs to connect there need to be a connection so you just need to sit down and think if someone that studied law was able to get a fully funded scholarship that need people people that can uh, contribute in climate change tell me how law goes with climate change but he was able to connect it so if you are able to connect it then they will know that you know what you want so let's go once you have found your the the the, the, the theme that matches your your description we go to the, the other one so we are going to go to the other uh the other step and the other step now will be for you to choose the school you want to apply so before you apply for this scholarship before the scholarship open by first there are things you need to do one the online eligibility test two you need to find the connection from your past uh, experience your work experience and the course you want to study how are you going to now find the course you are not going to apply apply separately yet like to the university no 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 you first apply to scholarship when it opens after you have done your online eligibility but you need to go to these universities here they have over 11 universities you need to go to any of these universities and find your course you need to go there and find your course you want to study check the university you want and find the course you want to study look for the requirements because if they select you for the interview of this scholarship then you can now apply to that school that you selected so you must make sure you meet the requirement of their uh, of their exam of their admission now talking about IELTS they said that during the scholarship application you don't need to submit ielts but when they now call you for interview you can now write ielts and submit ielts so if they call you for interview then you can be able to now submit ielts on a given date so that is very important you will now go to any of this school and check the course you want to study please make sure it aligns with the three things i said your past degree experience your work experience and then what you want to study aligning it with the theme of your country or continent now another thing you need to really 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 make sure okay when the application opens you now come here and you select your continent and then you can be able to click on online apply and then you can be able to apply ap uh, apply online here so please make sure you do you do the eligibility test after this video and then you take each of the steps one by one read it thoroughly the place that i want you to really really read is their selection criteria the selection criteria is the place I want you to read. So they, they mentioned how they select their students. You will see some words that or statements that repeat itself. You need to make sure that you look at those statements. So what are the kind of uh, people they want to select? A successful applicant must, have, must study in a similar field they have already worked in. So you see that. Successful applicants must want to study in a new country. So in your SOP, you also need to talk about uh, because because they will ask you questions they will ask you questions of the online interview they will ask you questions on the online application and you need to be answering them like you need to write your sop inside the uh, online 
application. So they might ask you about how you can adapt a new environment, what do you consider as challenges, and how you can adapt to that so that they will know your adaptation skills in a new environment. Successful applicants must communicate well. That and like we look for applicants who can communicate clearly listen effectively and answer questions appropriately so you can also look through that please read this one very very well so that you understand what they need but most importantly your work experience and how you it, you can be able to align it with the theme of your country is very very important so these are the steps to apply to this scholarship i would advise you to please take your time this is the apply online when it opens but first of all you will need to do your eligibility test like I said you need to do your eligibility test so once you've done your eligibility test you will know whether you are eligible or not and then you can be able to now use that eligibility number to apply during scholarship the most important thing they look at is your answers during your essay so you need to start practicing now you need to check on youtube and see if there are people that have uh, that that made screen record of the past essay and see the questions they asked so you need to start now to uh, uh, check all these things how you can align your work experience with the course you would want to study and also the theme to pick one of the theme from your home uh, from the the, the theme uh, for your continent and talk about it so they will see if it is good governance then you can be able to tell them problem statement tell them how you've solved it in the past whether voluntary experience or work experience and then your academic ex experience and the course why do you want to apply for this course how does this course align with your work experience how will this course contribute to the development of your country. So you need to also check all these things. This is what you will need to first of all write down now so that when the uh, when the application opens, you will be able to know how you can impute that and uh, to answer those questions. So guys, this is about this scholarship. Yes, it's very stressful, but it contains a lot, a lot, a lot of goodies. If you can get the scholarship, you can move with your family. It contains a lot. So I wish you guys good luck. Please remember the first thing you need to do is do your eligibility test. And once you see that you have you are eligible then you can now take your time to go through each of these steps so that you will find out all the things that you need to gather and all the things that you need to prepare before this scholarship opens it's going to open by 1st of february and i wish you guys good luck hopefully we will get more people that will get the scholarship the essays will be a lot of essays so you need to prepare that is why i said if you can be able to write at least four pages to be able to link all these things up now then it will not be a problem you proofread it give people to help you proofread when you now get to the when the uh, the application open you will not find it difficult to answer those questions so guys this is the tip that i would like to give to you guys and i wish you good luck during this application see you in my next video bye